Our pioneer advocate for the blind, Tan Guan Hing, died on Tuesday. He was 86. Mr Tan was the first blind person to helm the Singapore Association of the Visually Handicapped, first from 1975 to 1980 and then again from 2005 to 2012. Where he spent decades championing community work for people with special needs and received many accolades, including the Go Chok Tong Enable Awards in 2019. Well, here to share with us more about Tan Guan Heng's legacy is Adrian Tan, the former honorary legal counsel at the Singapore Association of the Visually Handicapped for over a decade. Adrian is now president of the Law Society and partner at TSMP Law Corporation. Good evening, Adrian. It's good to see you and thank you for joining us. Uh, you worked with Mr. Tan uh, for about a decade, we understand. I mean, his life epitomized resilience and tenacity, had many challenges. What was your experience like working with him? So everyone has a Tan Guan Hing story it's because he's this dynamic guy. He's very small in physical stature, but he has this huge presence. He would know everybody in Singapore, from the president of the Republic of Singapore downwards. He would be able to pick up the phone and talk to dignitaries, celebrities, you name it. He was also a novelist and he wrote a romantic fiction, if you can believe it. And he was the first blind president of the SABH. So the thing is, he was always very passionate about the rights of the blind. And he wrote me in to be the honorary general counsel um, to fight various sorts of causes. One of, one of them, he told me, was about blind people voting. He was very passionate that blind people should be allowed to vote in general elections. The problem is that if you think about voting, you think about going in to a booth and looking at a piece of paper and marking across, uh, you, you have to be able to see to be able to exercise your right as a citizen. And blind people couldn't. Um, and Mr. Tan Wan Heng uh, wanted to change all that. So he wrote me in. I, I had to write to government authorities. And before long, the Ministry of Law uh, changed many things so that blind people were able to vote in elections. In many other causes like mobility of blind people, the idea that uh, they could be able to cross the street on their own. So nowadays when you, when I cross the street and I hear these traffic lights going beep, 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 I think of Mr. Tan because that's basically one of the things he was championing, that all traffic lights will make a noise when, right. uh, uh, Mr. Tan. when it's safe for blind people to cross. Mr. Tan, the, the figure you are describing, as you say, it's a dynamic, it's a giant figure. Uh, and he is, I suppose, almost your classical, the person who stands up, an activist for rights of the visually handicapped. But often, and this is a cliche that is sometimes true, uh, people who, are, who have all these great qualities as public personalities, as private individuals, they can be very, very different. Sometimes they have a much darker side to them. Did Mr. Tan have them as well? Did he have a dark side to him? No. Mr. Tan Guan Heng is one of those what you see is what you get types. He's a picture of a Singapore that we used to have. Very plain speaking, um, the sort of roll up the sleeves and get down to work. If he had a problem with you, he, would, he wouldn't hide it, right? He would straight off uh, sit across the table and express his views very clearly. The number of times I've sat in meetings with him late into the night where he would be having furious arguments with uh, committee members or other stakeholders, he wouldn't hold back. I think Mr. Tan's uh, um, history is one of being very outspoken. He, uh, he is a person who just wants to get stuff done. So that's why I think he was a big success. He was the sort of leader that the community needed at that time. Adrian, you spoke earlier about Mr. Tan's passion for writing. You also spoke about the amount of service uh, that he did for others as well. Uh, his community achievements. Talk to us about 
some of those and, and what perhaps the public should know more about what he achieved? So when you think about the blind community, it isn't very big. It's, uh, I think at the moment, two to 3,000 people uh, who are our members. And this, this group of people, although they're blind, they, they have different specific needs. So what Mr. Tan had to do was to go and listen to many blind people. And he knew practically all his members by name. Uh, he would be able to find out what they needed. And then he would be able to put together a plan to advocate for change. I mentioned the uh, mobility issue, which is something where, which uh, is very important to blind people. They want to feel independent. They want to be able to cross the street on their own or, or to take public transport like the MRT. So Mr. Ar Mr. Tan was very big on pushing accessibility. Mr. Tan was also keen on setting up the mobile messwares. Um, these are blind people who would travel to, uh, to you to, to give you a nice massage. The, Mr. Tan had, had um, also a lot of work setting up and protecting the land owned by the Blind Association. So the Blind Association occupies a valuable piece of land in Topayo, and there are always people with plans they want the blind people to do this and do that with the land. And Mr. Tan was very right. shrewd, okay, right. and he would always have, have the eye for protecting right. um, the land to make sure that it was used right. for the right Thanks purpose. Thanks so much for joining us to share your memories of uh, the four pioneer advocate for the blind, Mr. Tan Guaning, who died Tuesday this week. Thanks so much for that. Adrian Tan, former honorary legal counsel at the Singapore Association of the Visually Handicapped. Thanks so much.